friend. You were thankful for being in the house of the Lord. Won't you give the Lord a hand? Praise. Amen. Thankful for being in the saints' prayer. We thank you for being in the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for celebrating a great life. So you may be seated momentarily. All may be seated. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Every day, somewhere. There's a celebration of life. Today is our opportunity to celebrate a great life, a great witness, a great service to humanity, a great man who have served a great God. Our sorrows may be heavy, but I ask that our joy be greater. For to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And what McKinley Washington has left us is a legacy to follow. A few moments of protocol. We ask that you would certainly maintain your mask, practice social distancing as much as possible, and you will turn your cellular phone off. Shouldn't ask you to do that before I check mine, right? You are aware of the service to continue beyond this service in Maysville, South Carolina. I trust that you have made preparation to join us there. Our order of worship will proceed as it is printed, with the exception that we have asked Ms. Mignon Clyburn to speak in behalf of Representative James Clyburn. We have asked the stated clerk of the Charles Atlantic Presbytery, Catherine Bird, to speak on behalf of Reverend Dr. Donnie Woods. And we have invited Councilwoman Anna Johnson to speak on behalf of Charleston County Council. Again, we ask that you would be not only prayerful, but be joyful as we worship the Lord our God. In fact, let us worship God.
morning. On behalf of the Hebron Zion Presbyterian Church USA, I extend to the Washington family our deepest sympathy. Please know that we are praying for you and with you, and please know that there is no expiration date on grief. And so you take the time that you need to rest in this moment, reflect in this moment, knowing that we are burying a servant of God, one who has done a good work, not only in the life of the church, but within this state. Let us pray. Holy and eternal God, we come today to praise, worship, and honor you on this day because you are worthy to be praised. On this day, we gather with heavy hearts to celebrate the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. McKinley Washington, Jr. Dear God, we ask that you send your comforter, the Holy Spirit, to lift our hearts and our spirits as we reflect upon Reverend Washington's life. Oh God, bring comfort to this family as they mourn, but remind them of his deep love and commitment to them. Allow the memories he made to bring them joy and comfort when the tears begin to fill their eyes. Oh God, we are grateful to you for allowing us all the opportunity to know him, to walk alongside him in this life as he fought for civil rights, as he labored in the vineyard, leading and guiding your people and creating laws in the state legislature that would benefit all people. Dear God, we are grateful for his life and his witness. God, you are the creator of all things, and we love you for loving us. We adore you because you extend your grace and mercy to us repeatedly. We love you for never leaving or forsaking us in times of joy and sorrow. And God, we trust you to guide us through this season of transition and great sorrow. Keep us, O oh God, not only in this hour, but for all the days of our life. Remind this family, God, that they do not mourn alone, but they have a great cloud of witnesses that mourns with them from the villages of Maysville, South Carolina, Sumter County, Edisto Island, Adams Run, Hollywood, Ravenel, Johns Island, Wadmala Island, Colleton County, and the entire state of South Carolina. His faith community will miss him and his faithfulness to his call to ministry. Dear God, he was the epitome of what it means to be a good and faithful servant. We gather in your name on this day to celebrate and say farewell to your servant, McKinley Washington Jr. We pray now that he is at rest in your presence. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Yeah. 
Good morning. Good morning. I've been requested to, at this time, ask all of our elected officials to please stand so that we may acknowledge your presence. So if we have elected officials, which we know we do, um, at this time, would you please stand so that we may acknowledge you? All elected officials, local municipalities, state, national, please stand. We express appreciation to each of you for your presence here today. As protocol has been established, I give God the highest praise as we pay homage to the Reverend Dr. McKinley Washington, Jr., my esteemed uncle. I am honored and elated for the opportunity afforded to me to share reflections from a family perspective. As I peruse the assembly today, I see many various populations represented here, all because of established and impactful relationships with Reverend Dr. McKinley Washington, Jr. While many of you knew my uncle in his roles as pastor, minister, elected official, commissioner, fraternity Masonic brother, organization finder, board member, advocate, public servant, classmate, etc., I simply knew him as Uncle Ken, a God-fearing man who loved his family and had an ordained purpose and path to fulfill. Our family village has been blessed to have Uncle Ken, as we, the descendants of the Jeffries Dover tribe, refer to him. As long as I have known my Aunt Beulah, I've known, uh, who is my mother's sister, I've known Uncle Ken. The elders of our village taught us that while God supersedes all, family is the foundation of existence. For family members contribute to the development of your morals, character, values, and are to be respected and honored. Ancestors also instilled in us to take care of the village. For first Timothy five and eight says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Uncle Ken knew that the, excuse me, Uncle Ken knew that the physical family is the most important building block to human society. And as such, it should be nurtured and protected. As he was aware of this core value, he demonstrated his unconditional love for the family, constantly through his interactions and his immediate, to his immediate and extended family members. With him, we were all family. He made each of us feel, feel special and exhibited genuine concern about our well-being. While each didactic relationship was unique within itself, there were commonalities in his rapport with everyone. Uncle Ken possessed an innate ability to see the purpose in each of us when we did not even see it in ourselves. His belief in providing for the family was also evidence by his assisting in the cultivation process to bring to fruition the mission. As he was a proponent of education, he and Auntie encouraged us to acquire the knowledge necessary to exemplify expertise for impactful results. They often created and assisted with opportunities for us to pursue our aspirations and further augment our gifts and purpose. In Uncle Ken's role as God's ambassador, it was vital to him that as a member of the village and provider of the family to ensure that we knew God and exercised our faith for Christian growth and maturity. He often nurtured our spiritual development in obedience to Ephesians 22 and 6, which states, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. My uncle's public service and advocacy work has truly had a profound impact upon the village. As a result of his and my mother's work with the Community Action Agency and the Head Start program, my professional career commenced at a Community Action Agency after college graduation. The purpose of these agencies 
is to fight the local war on poverty by creating for everyone, but especially the poor and vulnerable populations in the community, the opportunities for education, training, work, and to live in decency and dignity. Admiring my uncle's resolve to positively impact and change lives inspired me to assist in organizing the York County Political Black Caucus. If you surveyed the members of our village, I am certain that each has similar experiences regarding the Reverend Dr. McKinley Washington Jr.'s impact upon their lives. We are aware of, the, of many of Uncle Ken's wonderful virtues, for he was a great humanitarian as evidenced by his benevolent gestures and service to others. He was resilient as verified by his successes and achievements. And he was the epitome of Colossians 3 and 12, which states, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion. It would take the rest of the day to personify my uncle and articulate all of his enduring and daring qualities that are worthy of emulation. Our village now has the task of continuing Reverend Dr. McKinley Washington Jr. legacy through the lessons gleaned, for we all knew the man who was. One of his favorite hymns is, What a Mighty God We Serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. To God be the glory for the life of Reverend Dr. McKinley Washington, Jr.